Hey everyone, it's great to connect with you again today. I look forward to seeing you in our worship services this Sunday, either outdoors, indoors, or streaming. We'll be outdoors at 8.30, indoors streaming at 11. And I'll be preaching from Leviticus 25 to 27, thinking about the holy life of restoration. I love doing puzzles. I have dozens and dozens of puzzles. Uh, some are places that commemorate something special to me, like uh, the stadium of my favorite team, or Mont Saint-Michel, which, uh, uh, which we visited on a trip to France a number of years ago, or things about family, which uh, a special puzzle that was given to me. Some scenes are things that just sort of intrigue me, like uh, a series of front doors decorated for Christmas. Or um, the, the Westerland Nebula that was just given to me. I look forward to making this puzzle. And then some are, are fun images for me, like, like this one of sports memorabilia. Or, uh, or this one with a, a big piece of cake, a big cake. Or this one with a multifaceted pizza. Some of these puzzles have been given to me through the years. And some I purchased simply because they look challenging or interesting. You know, when I choose a puzzle to work on, the first thing I do before I even open the box is to study the picture in order to get a feel for what I perceive to be the level of difficulty. So, for instance, when I look at this one, I'm confident that I can complete it pretty easily, maybe even in one sitting. All the, the pieces just seem to fit together pretty well, and it didn't take me very long to make it. I'm... When I look at other puzzles, it seems like the one with the nebula, that's probably going to take a little while because everything is sort of spread out. There's a lot of similar and a lot of dark to it. I've been doing puzzles long enough to have a fairly good feel for what I'm getting myself into. Recently, however, I was surprised. I looked at this box and I assumed that I would have minimal trouble completing it. All I can say is that I was wrong. I assumed that all of the colors would be easy to distinguish, particularly as opposed to a puzzle with lots of water that would be difficult to distinguish. What I failed to take into consideration is that this puzzle isn't primarily colors. This prim puzzle is primarily faces, eyes, noses, mouths. This puzzle has hundreds of faces on it. And they have to, every one of them has to be distinguished. And on small pieces of cardboard, it was far more complicated and honestly far more frustrating than I was expecting. Once I completed this puzzle, I started thinking about it. And I was struck by a larger, more important reality. Not just that human faces are a lot more difficult to put together in a puzzle than a castle or a nature scene, but that human relationships are much more com complex and complicated and difficult in general. There is a complexity to human relationships that's far more demanding of us than other parts of nature and life that we encounter. Yeah, yeah, our work can be demanding. Trying to fix something that's broken can be maddening or trying to figure out a complex formula or trying to explain a concept to people who have no foundation for understanding it trying to meet the expectations of a boss or trying to keep something we love afloat can feel overwhelming. Our work can be frustrating and complicated and demanding, but I think all of us would agree that human relationships are much more. We can't hurt the feelings of a pipe that we're trying to install or the software we're trying to manage. And if classrooms or offices or homes were simply about accomplishing tax, the tasks, that would be one thing. But once people enter into the mix, everything gets more complicated. I would suspect that most of our anxiety, uncertainty, frustration, pain, related to whatever work we do at home or somewhere else, is about people. And in the midst of that struggle, it's easy to forget that relationships are what make life blessed. There's nothing more demanding than love, but there's also nothing more blessing and more blessed than love. And there's probably nothing more indicative of our relationship with God than our relationship with other people. The Apostle John writes in his first letter, Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they've not seen. 
And God has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And why is loving others so intimately connected to loving God? Well, in this first letter, John also writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. God creates us for relationship with him and with each other. And though relationships can be demanding and sometimes it feels like the puzzle may never look right, it's in these moments that we remember that we love because God first loved us. Not because we are easy to love and not because we are uncomplicated and not because we are good, but because he is. And we begin to discover that relationships and love though demanding and complex and complicated, are part of what makes life so wonderful and beautiful. And we begin to experience in relationships what we were created for. Father, thank you for the gift of relationships. Open our minds and our hearts to know and accept your unconditional love for us so that we might be free to willingly, joyfully, passionately love each other. And find in loving great joy. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful day.